Hey everyone, welcome back to The Budget Sportsman. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video. This is gonna be the second video in a three-part series on how to film your own hunts, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to choose your camera. Now, I'm not gonna tell you which camera to buy, but I wanna give you some pros and cons and kind of compare two different styles of cameras, which would be something like this DSLR and this camcorder. And I'm gonna give you the pros and cons of each. Now, in the last video, I mentioned that I do some video work outside of this hunting channel, and so for that purpose, I already owned two of these Canon DSLR cameras. And so I just decided to start filming my hunts with what I already had. Now for today's conversation, we're gonna kind of lump DSLRs and mirrorless cameras into the same category. Yes, there are some differences, but there's a lot of similarities that I would kind of say they fall into the same category for the purpose of this discussion. And this style of camera is going to have interchangeable lenses. That's pretty much what defines DSLRs and mirrorless cameras is that they're gonna be some sort of an interchangeable lens system. This actually is one of the things that I find as a benefit is I use this lens, which is an 18 to a 135 lens for my filming when I'm in the tree stand. And then I would often switch to a different lens that actually has a bit more of a cinematic look to it for some of my B-roll shots when I was on the ground tracking a deer, uh, just trying to gather shots to help tell the story of my hunt. And so, I could kind of have the best of both worlds. I've got a bunch of different lenses that I can play with. One of the biggest advantages of this camera or cameras like it is that not only do they take absolutely amazing video, but they also take some really amazing photos as well. In fact, most of you probably look at this camera and think of it as a photo camera, but it does both super well. And so that's a big advantage, whether it's uh, wanting to take a photo for your thumbnail on your YouTube channel or whether it's wanting to take uh, some pictures for your Facebook page, or even if it's just wanting to take that hero shot with your big buck that you harvested or whatever the game is that you're hunting, uh, this is going to be a, an amazing device for that because not only can you take your, your hunting videos, but you can also take those great pictures and capture your memories that way as well. So it's an all-in-one all kind of a package as far as that goes. Amazing quality, like I already mentioned. The interchangeable lenses is great. One thing I really love about this particular model and a lot of models similar to this is that it's got a swivel out display here that can pretty much go in any direction. So if I wanna turn this around uh, to face me, uh, I can see what's going on, see how I'm framed in the picture. Uh, pretty much no matter how the camera's positioned on the camera arm when I'm hunting, there's a way to see this. There's a couple of downsides with this style of camera. And I would say the biggest downside that I feel like I face in my filming is the lack of zoom. So this is an 18 to 135 lens. That's the, the, those numbers are called the focal length and just making it as simple as I can, that's the best way to explain the amount of zoom that this lens has. There's a lot of lenses that have more zoom. A, a 200, a 300, a 400 millimeter lens is gonna have a lot more zoom than this 135. The downside is very often, those lenses don't also include the wide angle lens, which on this lens is the 18 millimeters. At 18 millimeters, I can hold it out like this and I can get myself in frame quite nicely. But a lot of the, the longer zoom lenses are something like 70 to 300. What, 70 millimeters is just not wide enough to turn around and do that interview shot because all you're gonna see is my nose. And so the 18 to 135 is one of the best lenses that I know of, especially for Canon cameras to be able to have the best of both worlds, but it is still a little bit limited in range. There were some times last year, especially when hunting Ohio, when I had a lot of bucks that were out at 75, 100, 125 yards, where I just couldn't get as tight on them as what I would have wanted to. Depending on your setup and how many cameras you have and exactly your style, you may be able to go to a different lens with more zoom and not have that problem at all. But because I'm trying to go with the wide and as much zoom as I can all in one package, uh, this is the best option that I've been able to find. Let's talk about this camcorder for a minute. And this is an old, old one. I would never recommend this particular model to anybody. But there's some advantages of a camera like this. The first one that I would mention is the form factor. Of course, this is a small one, and depending on the quality and depending on what you buy, they do get a little bit bigger than this. But typically, they're kind of in one uh, sort of direction here. They just kind of are a, a cylinder, a little bit of a square tube there. Whereas this, you kind of have your lens this way and then you have the grip sticking out. And so this can be a little bit more cumbersome to find a nice place in your backpack. A lot of times camcorders like this are a lot easier to find a pocket to put in and, and keep safe in that way. Another advantage that I already mentioned uh, and kind of in contrasting with the DSLR is that typically these have a lot of zoom. And let me mention 
there's a lot of models of both styles of camera. And so I'm making some generalized statements, but you definitely need to do your research about what you're getting. But typically, I would say that the camcorder is going to have better zoom. Uh, another advantage that this camera has is the ability to plug in a lane controller. I shouldn't say this camera because this one doesn't. This is something that you need to research as well. But a lot of hunters are using a lane controller, L-A-N-C. And what it does, it's a, it's a remote control basically that plugs into your camera and you would mount it right here onto the arm of your tripod head. And what it would give you the ability to do is turn on, start recording, and zoom in and out all from that remote. And because it's mounted to the handle of your tripod head, you can basically put your hand in that one place and move the, the camera around, start, stop recording, zoom in and out, all from that one place. Why is that an advantage? Well, on this camera, I when it's in standby mode, I have to hit this button right here to turn it on and then start recording. That's one place that I have to do something. Then in order to zoom, I have to move my hand up here and zoom in and out. Then, in order to position the camera, I have to move my hand back to the tripod head handle and move it where I want to go. So I'm actually having to do three different locations to get my camera where I want it to be on recorded and zoomed in the way I want. Is that a big deal? Not necessarily. And one thing that I will say about this is sometimes when a deer is coming in, I want to zoom in or zoom out a little bit on it. It's really easy to reach over and do that very quickly with this lens, as opposed to it might take a little bit longer with a length controller, or even just using the zoom in and out on a camcorder. So there's some advantages and disadvantages of both. One of the downsides of this style of camera is that typically, in my experience, they don't take very good pictures. As opposed to the DSLR or the mirrorless, which is going to do great pictures and video, this is going to probably take good video if you get a high quality camcorder. But in my experience, the pictures are absolutely lousy. And so that's going to be a little bit of a disadvantage. One other thing I want to point out about the, the camcorder is that usually their displays are on the left side. So if you're right-handed, that works out perfectly. And if you're right-handed and you mount that camera on the right side of you on your camera arm, again, no problem. But where you might run into an issue is if you're left-handed and you mount that camera on the opposite side, depending on how you set it up, I have heard reports of people having trouble seeing that display when it's mounted on their left side. It may not be an issue for you, just something I wanted to point out. One more thing I want to point out about the DSLR is when I was thinking about filming with this, I had a question that I couldn't find answered, and that was this. When I turn this on, listen to the noise it makes. Hopefully you could hear that. There's a mirror inside that flips up. And I was really worried if a deer would hear that sound. But I can tell you, after filming for a year, harvesting three deer on film and shooting another one on film that I wasn't able to harvest, uh, I had no trouble at all with deer ever hearing this. When it's right by your ear, it sounds really loud, but when you're 20 feet in the tree, it's, it's almost inaudible. So um, that's one thing that I just wanted to point out that I wouldn't worry about if you're thinking about using this style of camera. One more style of camera I want to address really quickly is a GoPro. Now a lot of people that are getting started and they see some cool films put out by GoPro and they think, I've just got to have a GoPro. Uh, they're small, they're light, I'm going to use this for hunting, I'll just mount it on my head. Uh, in my opinion, these make terrible primary cameras. I would not buy one of these as your only camera to go out and start hunting. The biggest disadvantage of this style of camera is that they have a very wide angle. They're made to uh, wear on your helmet when you're in your race car and be able to see that whole cockpit or when you're skiing to really get that wide angle of, of flying down the mountain, parachuting. You know, we've all seen those hero shots. Unfortunately, when you're trying to shoot a deer at 20, 30, 40 yards away, especially if you start getting into gun hunting and they're farther away, uh, the deer is going to be a spot. These cameras do have a wide, medium, and narrow mode, but typically even on narrow mode, it's still a wide angle shot, and that deer is just going to be a very small part on that screen. Especially if you're wearing them on your head, you get a lot of bounce and bob. I really don't recommend them. If you watched my first video, you did see how I utilize these for a second angle that really helps tell the story. And so I think they're great for that, but I would never recommend them as your primary camera. I hope these tips are helpful to you. If you have any questions about DSLRs, camcorders, or even GoPros, or if you have questions about audio equipment, camera arms, etc., I certainly don't know it all, but I'd be glad to give you any help that I possibly can. Just leave a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, remember to get off YouTube and get outdoors into God's great creation.